Mark Gibson Humanoids channel. The content to this animation CPA, MBA, CMA, ACPA, ASA, Australia. Enjoy learning! We'll proceed with derivatives. So first, let's talk about what uh, what is risk, risk management. No? So risk management is an organized process to deal with risk. It helps to identify what are the potential risks it may have, analyze them, and takes necessary precautionary actions to reduce the risk. Now, the reason why we've talked about risk is that um, well, earlier we've talked about uh, I, I've talked about derivatives. No, so how we use this as a tool no, to mitigate the risk. No, so. Uh, basically, the risk of paying more, no? so that's why we're entering into uh, these derivative instruments. No? So to help finance managers avoid fluctuations, a variety of tools known as derivative help manage the risk. There are four important kinds of derivatives, and they are forward contract, future contract, options. So in, in options, we have put option and call option and then swaps. No? So we'll talk about each of these uh, derivatives. Okay, Forward contract is a contractual agreement made by two parties. One party agrees to buy a commodity or financial asset on a date in the future at a fixed price. No? So tandaan yung class, ha? On the other side of the contract, the seller agrees to deliver the commodity or the financial asset in the future at a fixed price as agreed with the buyer. So in general, the payoff of, the payoff of a long position in a forward contract per unit of a commodity or financial asset is ST minus K, where K is the delivery price and ST is the spot price at the maturity date. On the other hand, the payoff under the short position is K minus ST. So pag uh, itong K, this is the delivery price and then ST is the spot price. No? So just to uh, be clear about, if the spot price is higher than the delivery price, by the time the forward contract matures, the holder of the long position gains and the holder of the short position losses. The same thing if the spot price is higher than the delivery price, by the time the forward contract mature, the holder of the long position losses and the holder of the short position gains from the contract. Now, to better illustrate that uh, forward contract, let's take discussion problem number one. No? So basically, class, no, pag sinabi natin forward contract, eh, meron tayong agreement to uh, purchase no? at a fixed price, fixed future price. No? So in forward contracts, there's this forward foreign exchange codes. No? So let's have discussion problem number one. Uh, what's the requirement? How much is the gains or losses that Piolo company need to recognize? So consider the spot forward foreign exchange quotes on dollars, December 31, 2020. So the spot rate is 42.1550. 30-day forward is 42.2550. 60-day forward is 42.5. Uh, 90 day forward is 42.6998. On December 31, 2020, Piolo Company enters into a long forward contract to buy $1 million at 42.6998 per $1 US, $1 US dollars in 90 days. This contract obliged Piolo Company to pay. 42,699,800 to buy $1 million in 90 days. On March 30, 2021, the exchange rate is 42.75. How much is the gains or losses that Piolo Company needs to recognize? So let's have uh, problem number one. Ay, 
I'll share my screen pala. Okay. Oops. Okay. So ang ang gina, ang gagawin natin dito sa class, identify mo natin yung mga given, no? So sabi dito kasi si Piolo will buy uh, 1 million dollars. Pero magkano ba yung magiging cost niyan uh, when the forward contract matures? Kailan ba muna yung Uh, forward contract in 90 days. So, finifix na yung rate at 42.6998. No? So, 42.6998. And then, uh, he pays how much? 42.75. Kung napansin mo, four decimal places yung ginagamit natin. no? Ayan. So therefore, one million dollars multiplied by forty-two point six nine nine eight. So that's forty-two million six hundred ninety-nine thousand eight hundred. Now, magkano niya binili? So that's forty-two point seventy-five or forty-two million seven hundred fifty thousand, or that's fifty thousand two hundred gain. In accordance with the contract terms, the company will only pay forty-two million six hundred ninety-nine thousand eight hundred and will receive one million, despite of an increase in the value of dollar against peso. The company who took the long position profits fifty thousand two hundred, since the dollars can immediately be sold for forty-two million seven hundred fifty thousand. Ato kasing forty-two million seven hundred fifty thousand. This is the spot rate. On the other hand, the party who took the short position lost fifty thousand two hundred because the company is obliged to sell the dollars at forty two point six nine nine eight. Hindi to forty two point six six eight no point six nine nine eight. Nine six nine eight instead of forty two point seventy five. Okay, so long position, it's gain kasi it's, it's spot price less the delivery price. No? If it's short position, it's delivery price less the spot price. No? So basically, class, it depends on uh, whose side of the contract you are. No? So ikaw ba yung nagbenta, ikaw ba yung uh, bumili. No? So in this case, it will be gain for Piolo. No? So that's problem number one. Okay. Now let's compare forward and futures contract. Because uh, I mean, there, there, there are uh, characteristics no, where they are similar. No? So forward contracts. It's between private. It's a pri private contract between parties, and then future contracts. It's traded on an exchange. So forward contract is not standardized, while future contracts are standardized contracts. No, so one there's one delivery date for forward contracts, and then for futures, there are a range of delivery dates. No, forward contract is settled at the end of the contract. Future contracts are settled daily. So forward contracts, delivery of final cash settlement. So contract usually closed out prior to maturity. No? So that's future contract. Now, an option is a contract by which the buyer of an option pays the seller a premium for the right to buy. So tandaan to class, ha? pag option na pinag-uusapan natin, uh, it's the right to buy or sell, but not the obligation. 
a specific underlying asset at, at a specific price at a specific future date. The underlying assets include stock, stock indices, foreign currencies, debt instruments, commodities, and future contracts. So, ibig sabihin, ito yung pwede nating uh, i-enter into option. No? So, tandaan na, uh, option is a contract by which the buyer of an option pays the seller a premium for the right to buy or sell. So, parang ganito, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to enter into in an option. Parang ang sinasabi natin sa option is uh, you're, you're going to pay for a premium para you have the right to buy or sell. No? So, yung kinukuha natin in an option is the right to buy or sell. The price in the option contract is known as the exercise price or the strike price. The date in the contract is known as the expiration date, exercise date, or maturity date. No, lagay ko lang lahat ng mga possible uh, uh, terms no, to denote the date in the contract. Now, call option. So, call. Uh, if it's a call, it's the right to buy. Ang kaibahan lang ng American option and European option, American option can be exercised on or before expiration date. While a European option, it can be exercised on its expiration date. So tandaan, if it's a call option, it's the right to buy. Okay, so to illustrate that, let's have discussion problem number two. So in January 2021, I call option on web stock with an exercise price of 100 per share with October 2021 expiration sold for 5 pesos. The spot price of the stock is 95. What is the gain or loss on the transaction if the price of the web, if the price of web is is on October 21 is 95 or 115. So basically, we're being asked to compute for two situations. No? When the price is at 95 and when the price is at 115. Magkana daw yung magiging gains or losses natin. That's problem number two. Okay, so we have uh, exercise, exercise price natin of 100. So that's given. Call option of 5. Ayan, expiration. Ayan, call option for 5 pesos. And then we have spot price of 95. Okay. Number of shares, 100, exercise price of 100, and the spot price of 95, and call option premium of 5. No? So at 95 pesos, the buyer, of the, op the buyer of the call option will not exercise his right to buy. The stock expiration date being the price of the underlying asset is lower then the exercise price. However, the buyer of the call option has to pay the seller for of the call option amounting to 500 shares. So pag-usapan muna natin to ha, para at least mas clear. So imagine ang um, exercise price is 100. Now the spot price is 95. Ito yun ha. ay in a call option, di ba? Sabi natin, ang, kinu ang binibili natin dito, ang kontrata dito is the right only. No? Not necessarily obligation to, to buy. No? So ito lang yung, para lang meron kang uh, right to, to buy. No? So, pero along with that is, syempre, meron kang babayaran ngayon na premium. Ito na yung uh, binabayad natin for that particular right. Kasi nga, uh, magkakaroon ka ng exclusivity. No? So you can buy it or not. 
no? Pro- of course, there's this premium, call option premium. Parang ganito ngayon, no? Ang exercise price was fixed at 100, pero ang spot price lang is 95. So class, ang tanong, uh, are you going to exercise your right? Eh ang right mo is 100, ha? And yet ang spot price lang is 95. No? So, the answer is hindi. Kasi nga, mas mataas yung ibabayad mo compared to the spot price. So, parang ganito na lang para mas mabilis intindihin. Ang presyo ng stock is 95 lang. Now, when you exercise the call option, it will be priced at 100 pesos. At tandaan, we're entering into derivatives to mitigate the risk. So, Between 95 and 100, saan ka ba, saan yung mas pipiliin mo? Mas, bibili ka ba na 100 yung presyo or 95? Of course, doon ka sa 95. But in, in, in this case class, since we, are, we entered into derivative, ito nga yung call option, so we, we need to pay for the call premium. So hindi natin i-exercise, hindi tayo bibili. The same time, we have to pay for the call option. No? So, naglagay ako ng number of shares just to illustrate that. So, therefore, we need to pay for 500 pesos. So, that's 100 shares multiplied by the call option premium of 5. Ngayon, pag-usapan natin, paano naman kung ang uh, spot price is 115? Na? Huh? Sige. So una, compare muna natin ang exercise price and spot price. So imagine na ang presyo ni Web is 115. But you entered into a call option, nagkaroon ka ngayon ng right to buy it for only 100 pesos, no? So 115 ang presyo ngayon, pero bini dahil nga meron kang call option, you can buy it for 100 pesos only. So meaning, meron ka na agad gain. So that's 100, 15 less 100. So 15 multiplied by 100, so that's 1,500. Pero tandaan, meron ka ngayon call option premium pa rin na babayaran. So that's less 500 pesos or you'll have 1,000 pesos profit. So at 215, ito naman din yung sinabi ko, no? the buyer of the call option will exercise its right to buy the stock at 100 pesos. The gain is reduced by the amount of the option premium paid to the seller or of the call option. Thus, the profit is 1,000 pesos. So, tandaan lang class, ang kino-compare natin dito is the spot price. O, ulitin natin ha, we enter into a call option uh, to mitigate the risk of paying more. No? So, ang naging example natin dito is si stock, but it could be different or other financial assets. No? So, instead of paying uh, 115, so in this case, no, Oh, so the market price is 115 pero we entered into call option and we exercise it at 100. So in this case, meron tayong magkakaroon tayo ng gain. No? And what if if it's 95? So instead of exer- we're not going to exercise it. No? So hindi tayo mag-exercise, we just pay for the uh, premium. No? So that's the call option premium. So I hope that's clear enough. No? So that's problem number two. Okay. Pag-usapan naman natin what a put option is. So it gives the holder the right to sell. Uh, kanina yung call option is the right to buy. Put option is the right to sell. At a certain date for a certain price. The buyer of the put option is expecting that the price of the underlying asset will go down in the near future. It is normally done by locking in at a certain price in the future that would secure the selling price of the underlying asset. So let's have discussion problem number three. On January 2021, it cost 7 pesos to buy European to buy European a put option on DMC stock. 
with an October 2021 expiration and an exercise price of 70 pesos per share. What is the gain or loss on October 2021 if the price of DMC is 50 and 90? So, tandaan, put option is the right to sell naman. No? So, magbebenta ka. So, let's have problem number three. <clears throat> So exercise price is 70, so that's given. And then put option premium of 7 pesos. Okay. October 2021, uh, <clears throat> the spot price is 50 pesos. O ito ha, magbebenta ka. Exercise price is 70. Spot price is 50. So therefore, you have a gain of 20. So 20 multiplied by 100, so that's 2,000 pesos. <clears throat> Put option of 7, we have to deduct minus 700. O sige, pag-usapan muna natin ito. At ito rin naman yung nakasulat dito, pero lang para lang mas maintindihan. Ha? Tandaan, in put option, it's your right to sell. The market price was only 50 pesos. And then, pwede mo siya ibenta at 70 pesos. No? So in this case, you will opt to exercise it. Kasi nga, ang bentahan is 50 pesos lang, but you can sell it you can exercise it at 70 pesos. So, ang tatandaan lang dito, class, ha? ang importante is malaman mo muna kung anong side ka. Ikaw ba si seller or ikaw ba si buyer? Kasi kung si seller ka, <clears throat> syempre, mas gusto mo na kumikita ka. So, by exercising it, you can sell it at 70 pesos. And remember, the mar market price is just 50 pesos. So that's an instant gain of 20 pesos. And what if, ito naman scenario number two. Scenario number two, the market price was 90. Oh, so kung 90 ang market price, ibibenta mo ba to at 70 pesos lang? So the answer is no, of course. No? Hindi, ko, hindi mo siya ibibenta kasi mababa yung benta, yung uh, option mo to sell no? compared to the market price. So therefore, in this case, you will only pay for the put option premium. So that's 7 uh, pesos. No? 7 multiplied by 100, so that's 700 pesos. So that's problem number three. Okay, so swap option, swap is an agreement between two parties to exchange a series of cash flows in the future. So in our example, there's this firm or country A, firm in country A, and then firm in country B. So usually class, uh, madalas nangyayari itong swap option between multinational entities. No? Um, so, uh, in, say for example, in the case of Xerox, there's this uh, uh, treasury or central treasury in Dublin or in Ireland. No? So, they, this transmits cash to different uh, Xerox entities worldwide. Now, the rates, it's fixed rate for country A. And then floating rate. No? So pag sinabi natin floating rate, there's this element of a third party supplying this uh, benchmark rates. No? Okay, so who are the users of derivatives? So dealers, these are the big banks and security houses whom derivative contracts are sold and bought. Speculators, these are people or firm who wish to take position in a, in a market. No? Arbitragers, these people are in business to take advantage of the discrepancy in pricing between two different markets. And then we have hedgers or individuals, public and private companies sometimes uses derivative products in order to reduce their exposures in interest rate, value of funds, value of stocks, 
currency exchange rates or prices of commodities. Actually, uh, that ends our discussion for today. This is the Year Instructor, Mark Gibson. Thank you for learning with us. See you in our next discussion. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya!